cool to follow Professor Neeson because uh, in high school uh, I read about Billion Dollar Charlie and uh, uh, in the civil action and uh, so it, and also the fact that he uh, usually when I talk to my colleagues about these things uh, I feel like the early adopter uh, but Charlie makes me feel like a late adopter with what he's doing uh, here so just to follow the point um, for, that Charlie mentioned in terms of whether to using debate to cool or to heat up a room. And I think that's the illustrative contrast between our two methods that I think at the law school and the kind of classes that he teaches, um, uh, he immediately wants cooling techniques and debate serves that, that function. Um, uh, whereas you know, I teach class in the philosophy uh, of social science, I teach class in introduction to political theory, and we often start with concepts that are abstract enough that I actually want to often elicit heat using debate. Uh, it's kind of the opposite direction I'm going. Um, and I want to see them connecting um, uh, sort of contemporary authors with cl classical thinkers, you know, Elizabeth Anderson, um, with any of the, given of the Greeks, Greeks uh, John Stuart Mill and Tim Scanlon. And so these are not topics where students immediately uh, often have extremely strong views towards. They, they do when I give them a particular case, but I'm not sorry with the case method. And so just uh, three things debate does for me. Um, sometimes I get it wrong. I pick a resolution uh, that is too abstract. This was a, a less successful debate. Um, whether toleration was paradoxical. I thought it was a fantastic, really gripping question. Um, and we made it work. This was a couple of years ago. But um, often, one of the values, as I'll mention, of Kialo is that it, it allows me to see what topics, what resolutions uh, generate not just equal opposition and support, uh, but also uh, that get people uh, really buy in and, and quite into it. And so here's a better one, even though it still is abstract. Uh, this one. Uh, was quite a, a useful entry point for introducing them to a debate between uh, the egalitarian Gia Cohen and Hayek. Um, I also have a debate about methodology behind a book like Heat Wave, a mixed methods book, trying to understand how nearly 1,000 people could die uh, in such a short period in Chicago um, some 15 years ago. And this is realized. They're debating whether uh, Eric Leinenberg was overly methodologically individualist, overly holist. Uh, so but, and I, I structure it around a standard debate format with rebuttals and responses and divide people into teams. And I'm going to add to this, uh, in the future, my colleague Gary King has perusal. And so the idea will be they'll be planning their, their debate strategy on the text, the very text that they're going to be debating, right? Because it, it treats perusal, as I understand it, I'm still learning that technology, allows them to, within articles, within book chapters, um, communicate with each other, collectively mark it up, and collaboratively mark it up. And then that will be a nice handoff into a debate the next uh, day. Uh, I also, being a former debater myself, will sometimes, only occasionally, play a particular role. So I'll have someone come in, and I'll play Weber, and they can play Durkheim, and we'll stay in character the whole time and as much as possible. There'll be little moments of slight incivility, but we'll try to keep it roughly civil. Um, but, uh, but like Charlie, I want to find ways to bring online discussion into class, whether online production they've done within the class or the night or a couple nights before. And so I use two, uh, two te technologies. Um, I have a system where they can text in or they can use the, the web. They don't need a laptop even. Um, it's also Twitter length responses. Now, now this is not a shared form. That's an important distinction. Uh, in this case, it's simply something that I can look at. So the idea is that I can, even with 100 students, quickly look, if it's uh, a pithy enough question, for the in intuitive outlier. Right, the, the handful of students who have a view that is not naturally occurring, or at least uh, occurs uh, much less frequently than uh, in the sort of population uh, uh, ethics of a class, and then to figure out uh, how I can harness that. So then they know they might be called on, but it's not a cold call, it's a lukewarm call, because they've already contributed partially, and they know that I'm scanning for views that are unusual, that foster debate. And of course, we're going to then discuss, but notice how much val how valuable that is as opposed to starting with the hand because the equivalent at the undergraduate level, I wouldn't call them gunners, that's a law school term. Uh, but of course, there is an analogy there of the more socially extroverted students. Um, so this other minds, as I call it, allows me to get into debates by figuring out where, where the intuitions lie, and then to set up a resolution based on that. And so does Kialo. But I've been using Kialo uh, really just for two, two and a half months, ever since talking to Eric, for the day before, the couple days before prep. I'll have a fixed resolution. This is the most recent one, um, inspired by Turkey 
Um, and it looks simple, right? Is it possible for, every, for a society to end its democratic institutions through democratic means? But if, if, you, use the, if you understand the, the, the predicate in a certain kind of way, and some students did, it wasn't actually that as even as I thought, um, that may not be conceptually possible for democracy to democratically off itself. Um, and that was a debate that's ongoing now. I'll be talking about that in the final lecture in part in class. So what it gives me is a way to get a sense of where views lie. It's never meant to, uh, to be done in, uh, in exchange for discussion. The idea is that we will then have discussion and section, uh, but it's worked very well, and it, uh, I don't want to go back to a flat file system of having them respond to a simple blog entry, which is what I'd done until this year. So finally, and I want to get to Jill because this is the classroom where she sets up debates that happen in section. Um, I've experimented this year, and this is the least technological thing I've done, with in-class simulations that just require pencil, paper, and dice. And I've done two of them at the beginning of my class, the first couple weeks. It was a, they ran uh, small groups of four or five people running a primary campaign. And then last week, they ran the general campaign. And I, what this meant to do, you could see we have people sort of geolocate themselves across the classroom. Um, but to force a series of decision points and have these small groups then debate whether they should take an action that may test the outer ethical limits of what uh, are acceptable campaign tactics. Now, obviously, that's been changing under our feet in the past uh, uh, six months. Uh, and I had to re kind of re regroup and figure out uh, whether I wanted to make the techniques even more um, morally fraught. Uh, but I just want to stress that this is very low tech, and it, it can work very well. And I'll just end with this example of whether they should run. It was uh, allowed a candidate to choose whether they could uh, use uh, micro-messaging, micro-targeting, and send a message to certain groups that might be perceived as coded and I think it's the first time ever a proposed uh, negative campaign message was using various quotes from the Republic. This is Plato's critique of the democratic person. So the question is whether your candidate should refer to the coded use of the word welfare, referring to recipients just wanting more and more honey. That's a quote from Plato. Indulging each appetite as it makes itself felt. One day he's drinking heavily, listening on the, to the flute. On the next day he's dieting and drinks only water. So they're referring back to all the canonical readings. And those are then being incorporated into this campaign. Um, I'll stop there, uh, but uh, I just want to draw that contrast where the idea is that debate gives me a certain energy and life in the room uh, that I think a, a flat form discussion hasn't necessarily had. So that's the value for me.